Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel, my name is Daniel, and today in this video we'll be covering another chess stock consuming game we played. Uh, again, I'm playing the black pieces, and let's take a look what happened. So here I play e4, so, sorry, my opponent plays e4, c5, we go into a Sicilian, open Sicilian, g3, and I go for my uh, dragon setup. Here, bishop c4, d6, uh, and here I continue with, uh, so here my opponent plays the move f3. Uh, this move, is so firstly, a stop knight to g4, which undermines this bishop on e3. Secondly, it could set up some g4, h4, queen d2 ideas and go for like a Yugoslav type attack. Uh, so here I play knight a5. I undermine this bishop here on b3, mainly because this bishop typically serves the purpose of attacking this f7 point, which is sometimes weak, especially if there's only, like if you imagine a scenario where there's only a g6 pawn and this h pawn has already been traded. Then if something like queen to g4, then there's queen captures on g6. So basically sort of a long-term exchange. I just snap off the bishop for now. And here I just play the move h5 because my opponent's played queen d2 and wants to go bishop h6. So here bishop h6 was played. I play bishop d7. I'm developing my final piece. Castles. And here I play the move a6. My is to play b5, queen a5, and go for some type of an attack. So h3 here. I play b5. B5. Uh, here g4. And I play queen a5 here. Trying to get to b, trying to get to a1. Here, king to b1 was played. Logical move. Here, I played b4. Uh, trying to still somehow get in at some point. Maybe I can move the queen and then play a5, a4, etc. Here, knight a2. Oh, uh, knight a2 was played. I play rook f to b8, simply supporting this pawn on b4. Knight to c1 was played, which is kind of weird. This knight on a, this knight on a2 already does a great job. Um, here, the computer actually suggests this very interesting move, knight f5. The idea being, if you play g captures on f5, then after a move like queen to g5, then there's a lot of pressure here. Uh, in fact, here my only move is to play knight e8 to defend this bishop. And after something like g captures on h5, you can play, you can stack your rooks here, and there's a lot of pressure coming down this file. So that's like an explosive option that my opponent could have chosen. Instead, they play knight to c1. Here I just back up my queen, queen b6. I'm trying to play a5, a4. Knight, two, knight c to e2. Here I play a5. Knight to g3, bringing the knight to the king side. So this knight has made a long journey back and coming forward just to put some pressure here on the h5 pawn. Here I just simply play the move a4. Uh, better here was actually to play. Uh, better here was actually to play the move bishop to h8. Uh, the computer suggesting or a4 is also possible. Uh, now that now that it's looking at it, a4, bishop takes and king takes, uh, pawn takes. And here I ignore this pawn because I realize if I well if I take this pawn and after knight takes pawn takes. Then this allows queen to g5 check and king h8. And here simply something like rook d to g1. And I'm very quickly going to get checkmated. In fact, it's a maiden 2. Queen h6 or queen g7 are the threats. It's it's not possible to stop them, pretty much. So I ignore this. I play a captures on b3. Knight captures on b3. And here I simply play the, I play the move queen a6. My idea is to dive down into one of these two squares. And in fact, this is actually a funny checkmate. Queen to c2. Uh, king to c1, here I have queen a1, uh, brilliant move, knight takes, after rook takes, this is actually a very nice back rank checkmate. Uh, so in the game, here my opponent plays the move queen to d4, pinning this knight, so maybe you can take here at some point and jump your knight into h5, here I give a check, and here I play the move bishop to e6, my idea is to take this knight and open up the king, so I have another line of attack. Here rook to d6 was played, and here I find the only winning move, rook to c8. The idea is that sort of with this pin here, this pawn is no longer actually defending this knight. So for example, let's say h4, then I can actually capture this knight. And if you play rook takes, I can play queen takes. You can't take this queen because there's a pin here. So basically playing rook c8 just removes a defender of the knight. So here king to d2 was played. And here I snap off the, I snap off the knight. Here another interesting option I considered was to play, or here another variation I looked at was after bishop captures on b6 b3, rook captures on b3, which my opponent uh, didn't do in the game. They played c captures on b3. However, after rook captures on b3, I have a very nice move here, rook captures on c2. The idea is if you play king captures on c2, then I play rook c8 check, and there's no way for the king to actually defend this rook on b3. If you play rook c3, then I can simply capture with the pawn, and once the king moves, then I can play queen captures on b3, and here I'm simply going to infiltrate into white's position. Uh, and here, if you move the king, then I can simply capture this rook on b3 for free. Uh, so here, after bishop takes and pawn takes, 
Here instead, I play this very nice move e5. Basically, I want to remove this queen's guard of this b2 pawn because this will allow me to bring all my pieces, all my major pieces, into the second rank. Um, and here, there's no square that actually defends this pawn. So here, my opponent plays the uh, throws in the move h6 first. I simply take this pawn. Better, I was actually to play king h7, which you'll see later on why. It's just a slight optimization. After king takes and queen takes on d6, here I play queen captures on b2. And after king e3, I, I don't actually end up defending this knight. I play this move rook a2. The idea with rook a2 is that I want to play queen to e2 or queen to f2, or sorry, queen f2 to give checkmate because this pawn uh, perfectly defends um, the king from being able to run forwards and this queen and rook cuts off the king from the back. So here my opponent plays rook f1 and here I play this nice move rook to c2. The idea now is that I can play rook to e2 check because after knight takes I have queen captures on e2 which is actually checkmate. Again this pawn defends this king perfectly. Uh, so you don't have time to actually play queen captures on f6 for example because rook e2, knight takes and after queen captures on e2 this is actually checkmate. All the squares are covered uh, and these two squares are covered by the pawn. Uh, and here just to illustrate a uh, funny variation, let's say you play rook e1 preventing uh, checkmate. Here I have the very nice move rook h2. Um, now I'm threatening mate on f2 with queen f2. So if you play rook to e1 here, then here I can get a queen sacrifice with queen e2, knight takes, and finally rook takes. And even though white is up a queen for a knight, uh, as well as a couple of, as well as, uh, actually pawns are equal here. This king is smothered in the center of the board by simply a pawn and two rooks. So here, queen f8 was played, and this is sort of what I mean by the optimization. If my king was on h7 instead in this position, like if you imagine my king on h7, then there would be no queen f8, and, and uh, sort of the collapse of white's position would be slightly more swift. However, here, I just have to run my king up, and here in this position, my opponent actually ran out of time. Uh, however, very simply, if my opponent continued to give checks, queen h6, then I can simply capture this knight, and if you play rook to g1 check, then here I can simply play the move rook to g2, just blocking, and here I'm still threatening mate on f2 as well as e2 now because my king has actually made the king walk all the way up to g3 and also captured the knight on g3 as well. So yeah, hope you all, so very nice attacking game in general. Um, starting out with sort of the opposite side attacks. Queen d2 firstly to initiate some attack here on the king side. And here I start attacking on the queen side, managed to break through successfully uh, and force the king out into the open. And then I slowly lured the king even further. I brought my brought all my major pieces into the back rank, or second rank, and then was able to get to a checkmate. So yeah, hope you all enjoyed this game. It was a very nice attacking game. And uh, see you guys all in the next video. And thanks for watching.